Mark chapter 12. And if you don't have your Bible with you today, uh, we have some there in the pew for you. We invite you to take one and turn there with us. And you can find Mark chapter 12 on page 868. Page 868 in the Pew Bible, Mark chapter 12. This month we have been looking at the theme of stewarding life. Stewarding life or managing life. God has given us one life to live. And we need to make sure that we're living it to the fullest. He created us, the Bible says, He created all things to bring Him pleasure and ultimately for us to bring Him glory. Now, sometimes in life, uh, we lose perspective on important things, don't we? It's, um, it's, we don't intend to do that, but nowadays it's a lot easier to do because our attention is so divided in so many different directions. And for those of you that, you know, have children that are in school at this time, you, you are, know exactly what I'm talking about. School teachers here, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Life's crazy, and uh, we're, we're pulled in a, a million different directions. And so because of the nature of life and the things that we do and the schedules that we keep, you know, sometimes we can let those important things that in, in life, we can let them slip a little bit. And this month, we like to look at some of these areas in our lives that often get neglected, if we don't regularly check them and check our stewardship in those areas. Today we're going to examine a subject that is very difficult for most pastors to preach about. Um, I don't look forward to preaching about this because, you know, a lot of people have ideas about preachers preaching on the subject of money. Um, and there are, I'm sure there are some pastors who, you know, are greedy or whatever. God forbid that happens, but I'm sure there are. Um, you know, most of us, though, are just trying to preach the whole counsel of God. And, uh, you know, we're just, you know, we are, you know, the church. We are the body of Christ right here. And you and I are held accountable to the things in the Word of God. And so this isn't about, you know, the preacher preaching about money in the church. It's about me preaching the whole counsel of God, being obedient to the Lord, and all of us obeying the Lord as He speaks through His Word. And so that's what this is about today. And so on the subject of money, I thought about this father who gave his little girl $2. And he said, now, you can do anything you want with the $1, but the other dollar belongs to the Lord. Well, you can imagine a little girl with a dollar. She clenched both of them in her fist and took off running to the candy store. And on the way to the candy store, she tripped over the curb and, and fell and one of those dollars, as you can see in slow motion, end over end, down the storm drain. And she hurriedly went over and grabbed the other dollar and stood up and brushed herself off and looked down in the storm drain and said, Well, Lord, there goes your dollar. And off she went to the candy store. Now, I don't think she quite understood the idea of giving and sacrificing for the Lord. But you know, everything we have is by the grace and the blessing of God. Amen. I mean, everything that God has blessed us with is blessed by God. And uh, we're to properly manage what we've been entrusted with. God didn't give us things to misuse. He didn't give us blessings to be selfish. He gives us these things in life, resources and life, to be used for His glory. And sometimes we become possessive of the money and materials that God has loaned to us. And we begin to focus more on the gift than the giver. Isn't that right? We do that sometimes. We think about the gift more than we think about the giver. Now, don't get me wrong. You know, when we labor and earn money for things, by the grace of God, it's okay to have a nice house, good cars, nice stuff, take a vacation, etc. Those things are fine. But biblical stewardship must rule our hearts in the matter of money. It's okay to have things. It really is. But we need to be good stewards of the things and the resources that God gives us. When we regard giving to God as a joy and a privilege, we're looking at the resources the way God wants us to view them. You know, giving, the Bible says, God loveth a cheerful giver. 
And we, when we see those as an opportunity to give to God out of a heart of joy, that's the proper way to look at giving. The question for us this morning is this. The whole point this morning comes down to a question that all of us can ask ourselves today. Whether you're a teenager or whether you're a senior adult on a fixed income, here's, here's the question today. Am I biblically managing the money entrusted to me by God? Am I biblically managing the money entrusted to me by God? Let's look at the Word of God today. Mark chapter 12, we're going to read a story or an account, I should say, from verses 41 through 44. And Jesus, the Bible says in verse 41, And Jesus sat over against the treasury, and beheld how the people cast money into the treasury. And many that were rich cast in much. And there came a certain poor widow, and she threw in two mites, which make a farthing. And he called unto him his disciples, and said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that this poor widow hath cast more in than all they which have cast into the treasury. For all they did cast in of their abundance, but she of her want did cast in all that she had, even all her living. Let's pray this morning. Our Father, as we come to the word that you have given, your precious word, Father, we're so thankful that we have your word today, that we can read it, we can study it. God, that you still speak through it. And Lord, as we allow your word to speak to our hearts this morning, I pray that you would do what only you can do. God, no man can change a heart, no man can change a life, but Lord, you can change hearts and lives. Lord, first of all, we pray for those who are here who don't know Jesus Christ as their Savior. Lord, people who don't know where they're going to go when they die. Father, I pray that today that you would speak to their heart and the Holy Spirit of God would convict them. And Lord, that they would choose today to trust Jesus Christ. Father, we pray for those here who know Jesus. For Lord, for those of us who know you and we're saved, we know that heaven is our home. I pray that you will speak to our hearts. Lord, for those who are being faithful in this area, Lord, and being obedient to you in this area, I pray that you would encourage, Lord, those folks. And Lord, for, for some who may not be, and Lord, maybe need to be obedient in this area, I pray that you would challenge and convict. So, Father, that we as your people can be obedient to you and experience the blessings of an obedient follower of Jesus Christ. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So here we are talking about money in church. And we've seen that when we regard giving to God as a joy and a privilege, that we're looking at giving in the way that God would like us to look at giving, the way that he expects us to look at giving. And the question is, am I biblically, am I biblically managing the money that God has entrusted to me? And first of all, we see in this passage today that number one, Jesus is aware of our giving. Jesus is is aware of our giving. Look at verse 41 and 42. And Jesus sat over against the treasury and beheld how the people cast money into the treasury. And many that were rich cast in much. And there came a certain poor widow, and she threw in two mites, which make a farthing. We see that Jesus is aware of our giving, just like he was. On that day, as he sat in the treasury, the Bible says he watched. There were seven boxes there. Six were for the regular giving. One was for, sac or one was for the, the tithe, the regular giving. Six of those boxes were for offerings, sacrificial giving. And as he watched people throw their money or cast their money or drop their money into those boxes, he took note of what was being done. Look at that word there in verse 41. And Jesus sat over against the treasury and beheld. He watched. He was focused in on people as they gave. He took notice. He, he saw if they were giving. But you know what? Everybody that day who was in that spot could watch those people and see if they were giving. 
They could see if someone walked up and dropped a handful of coins or maybe took a bag and dumped it. I don't know. But everybody in attendance that day that was there could see what everybody was giving. Everyone saw that. But Jesus saw how they gave. And not everyone saw that. Look what it says. And Jesus sat over against the treasury and beheld how the people cast in money. You see, Jesus and God, they see things that we cannot see. God sees things that you and I can't see. You know, 1 Samuel 16, 7 says, But the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on his countenance or on the height of his stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord seeth not as man seeth. For man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. You see, you and I, we can't see each other's hearts, but God can see our heart. And not only did Jesus see that day that people were giving, but he saw, the Bible says, how they gave. What was their heart or their attitude in the matter? We've already mentioned that the Bible says that God loveth a cheerful giver. God loves somebody who gives joyfully to him. And we'll have more on that later. But the question is, how do you and I give? Not just do we give, but how. What is our heart's condition? The second thing we notice in this passage, let her be in this, this point, he watched what they gave. Did you see that? He took note of what they gave. It says in verse 41 that the rich cast in much, and in verse 42 that the widow cast in two mites, which make a farthing. Now a mite... Two mites is a fraction of a penny. So this poor widow didn't have much at all. And in our term, she didn't have anything. Most of us won't even bend over to pick up a penny. You know, it's just, even if it's heads up, right? You know, but we won't even bend over to pick up a penny because it's not worth our energy. And this poor woman, the Bible says, gave all. But notice that Jesus saw what they threw in. He took notice of what they were giving. Did you know that God cares about our giving so much? that he records what folks give, and he record what they gave on that day. As he watched this morning, as the plates passed by us, or the last opportunity that we had to give, what did he see? I understand pay periods are different and things like that, and not everybody gives every week. I understand that. that that's how it works. But the last opportunity that we had to give to the Lord... What did he see? Did we give? More importantly, how did we give? He knows what we gave. Listen, God knows it all. And preacher may not know, and, and the men here can tell you that I don't know. I don't want to know what, what people give. That's because why? They're not giving it to me. They're giving it to the Lord. And when we give, church, myself included, when we put that envelope or that money in that plate or that check... That's not to me, that's not to Central Baptist Church. We're giving it to the Lord. Now, of course, the church, we are the stewards of God's money. And we try to be good stewards of what God brings here. We prayerfully consider, we talk about it monthly, the trustees. We try to be good steward of, of what God gives and what, what you have given to the Lord out of obedience from your heart. But it's not that you're giving to me or Central Baptist. You're giving to the Lord, and He knows that. And He knows what our heart's condition is when we give. And when we regard giving to God as a joy and privilege, we're looking at our resources the way God intends us to. The question is this morning, am I biblically managing the money entrusted to me by God? The second thing we'll notice in this passage this morning is Christ deserves a sacrificial praise. Christ deserves a sacrificial praise. Look at verse 42. It says, And there came a certain poor widow, and she threw in two mites which make a farthing. Like we said, it's a fraction of a penny. But look what verse 44 says. For all they, the rich, did cast in of their abundance, but she of her want, of her need, of her emptiness, did cast in all that she had, even all her living." If you will, she took her entire paycheck and put it in 
the box that morning. The amount was not much that she gave. It was a fraction of a penny. A couple years ago, my dad gave me. Uh, he found a widow's mite, and, and he gave that to me as, as a gift, and, and I have that in my office, and it's, it's interesting. It's a very small, quite smaller than a dime, and it looks completely insignificant. You can understand why. It doesn't make much. But she took two of these button-sized, tiny little coins and put them into the treasury, the Bible says. The amount was not much. You know, our society values how much a person has, doesn't it? We always want to know who's the richest, right? Basketball players, football players, all these guys, and uh, the people who own Apple and Microsoft. And We always want to know who the richest. How much do they have? We value how much a person has, but God values how much a person gives. When Jesus watched the people giving in the temple, he praised the widow who cast in just two mites because it represented a sacrifice. She was praising God with sacrifice. You may notice that when we bring our ushers forward, that I'll say this. Well, I'll say we'll have our ushers come forward as we prepare to worship the Lord with our tithes and offerings. I don't just say that as a filler. <laughs> you know, that's not just church words. It's because when we give, it ought to be an act of worship and praise from our heart. And it was for this woman. You don't give like that if you're not giving out of a heart of worship and love. In 1995, way back then, right? That's when I graduated. Can you believe that, Brother Boyles? 1995. The nation was stunned when news broke that an elderly woman named Osceola McCarty had donated $150,000 to the University of Southern Mississippi for their scholarship fund. Now, for a philanthropist, someone who's in a lot of money, sorry about that, honey, <laughs> philanthropist, yeah, sorry. Uh, <laughs> when you have somebody who has a lot of money and they like to donate and they like to give to charity, that doesn't sound like a big thing. But here's the, the deal for this woman. This 87-year-old woman had been forced to drop out of school in the, ninth, in the sixth grade to care for her family. And for more than 60 years, she washed clothes, house to house, doing people's laundry for a meager pay. She took what she could live on and lived on it, bare minimum, and saved the rest. <laughs> and when she was in her late 80s, she was able to give $150,000 to a scholarship fund because she, didn't, she was helping other people get the education she could never get. Talk about a sacrifice. She could have lived better. She could have had more. But there was a cause. She cared about something. She wanted to give to someone. She gave out of sacrifice. Now notice the amount that the woman, the, the, the widow gave was not much. But notice this. It was more than the rest. Isn't that interesting? In God's accounting, the man who walked up with a smile on his face and a bag full of coins and dropped in 2,000 mites, she gave more. Isn't that unbelievable? I mean, you and I would look at that and say, we need to keep that guy around, you know. Boy, make sure you thank him, you know. We want to keep those kind of guys around. But when Jesus watched the poor widow walk up with her two mites and out of worship in her heart and praise to her God, she carefully put them into the treasury. God saw a heart of sacrifice and he said, he said in verse 44, she gave all. She gave more. I love that. Because it's not about what we have, friend. It's about what we give. Listen. If it's about what we have, not everybody's on the same playing field. We can't all be the same if it's about what we have. But thanks be to God, in His accounting, it's about what we give and how we give. And we can all do that. We can all give with a heart of worship and praise to God and out of obedience to His command. Listen, we can all do that. As He leads, we could do that. This wasn't Jesus just picking a parable to teach us a lesson on giving more. It's the difference between giving out of expectation and giving from a heart of thanksgiving. And I love that. Have you heard it said? This is a cliched phrase, but i got to say it, right? You can give without loving, 
but you can't love without giving. Because those of you in here, those of us, when we love somebody, don't we want to give them something? We want to give them everything we can, don't we? We want to help our kids. We want to help our, our spouse. Man, we, when we love somebody, we just can't give enough, you know? And you can give without loving, but you cannot love without giving. Our tithes and offerings are an act of worship. It is an outward sign of the gratitude that's in our heart for God's unbelievable blessings in our lives. And I would venture to say that as all of us look at what we've been blessed with today, all of us could say today, God's been good to me. Amen? Amen? God's been good. He's blessed us. Whether we give or not should not be based on our financial status. It should be based on our attitude and thanksgiving to God. When we regard giving as a joy and a privilege, we're looking at our resources the way God means for us to see them. And again, the question, am I biblically managing the money entrusted to me by God? The third and final thought from this passage this morning is this. God honors those who honor Him. God honors those who honor Him. Look at verse 43. And he called unto him his disciples, and saith unto them, Verily I say unto you, that this poor widow hath cast in more in than all they which have cast into the treasury. For all they did cast in of their abundance, but she of her want did cast in all that she had, even all her living. First of all, it's a fact from Scripture that God honors those who honor him. Think about this. Jesus calls over the disciples, the apostles. Paul calls them the pillars. The men who walked with Jesus during his earthly ministry, and these are supposed to be the spiritual guys, right? And he calls them over to teach them a lesson. And he didn't call them over when the rich people walked up and put in all their money. He called them over and said, fellas, come see this. Gentlemen, I want you to see this. Come here for a minute. See that widow right there? Yeah. What about her? She cast in more than all of them. And you can imagine like you and I would have done. What? I saw it, God. You did too. What are you talking about? And then he explains what he's talking about. They gave out of their abundance. They had plenty more back home where that came from. They were going to be just fine. This woman gave everything she had. That is sacrifice. And she was honored by the Lord Jesus Christ. Think about this. She became the example of giving to the apostles. So every time they thought about giving to God, they remembered what he said about that woman. You want to talk about being honored? How about this honor? The fact that when Jesus told them that, every time they would teach a new convert, or they would teach a new believer, or they would teach a new church about giving, they'd say, you should have seen it this day. Jesus called us over to watch. Can you imagine the honor that this woman got? And we don't even know her name. That's another lesson, by the way, that, that wasn't in my notes, but God just put on my heart. If people know my name, that's not important. It is important if he knows that I'm being obedient to him. That's what's going to matter. We don't even know her name. But I'll tell you this, I want to find her when I get there. Giving to God is not a promise to make you wealthy. You've heard them on TV, right? The preachers. If you give to God, you know, he's going to, oh, he's going to bless you. And they work you up into a frenzy and you pick up the phone and you call and they get rich and you lose your money, right? That's not what giving to God is for. Listen to this, 1 Samuel 2.30. Wherefore the Lord God of Israel saith... I said indeed that thy house and the house of thy father should walk before me forever. But now the Lord saith, be it far from me. Listen to this. For them that honor me, I will honor. And they that despise me shall be lightly esteemed. It's a fact from scripture that God honors those who honor him. He said, for them that honor me, I will honor. 
Amen. And those who are faithful in giving, and, and, and people who give out of obedience and a heart of sacrifice and thanksgiving to the Lord, and give with a joyful attitude, they will tell you that God's been good in their life. Everything been, have they been rich? No. Wealthy beyond their wildest dreams? No. But God's honored them. God's been good to them. It's a fact from Scripture. It's also a fact from experience. Verse 44. Again, he's teaching the, the, uh, the disciples about this woman, this incredible truth from a poor widow with two mites. And he inspired John, Mark, and Luke to write about it in the infallible, inspired, inerrant, preserved Word of God. It's recorded forever. Hey, listen, the Bible's not going to pass away. Doesn't it say that? Yeah, the Bible's not going to pass away. So forever, this woman's heart in giving is recorded. That's an honor. That is an honor. We're going to see her someday. I want to I meet her. I want to thank her for obeying the Lord. I want to thank her for her sacrificial giving that was an inspiration to me. Could you imagine being the person who inspired Thousands of people all through eternity, all through time, to give to God the way that she gave to God. What an honor. And this poor widow whose name we don't even know. No doubt when we thank her, she'll give the glory to God. Seems to be that kind of a lady. The economy, we all get nervous, don't we? I had a friend tell me just the other day that they're starting to close some plants where he works. He's got four children. He's a little nervous. The economy is not stable. It fluctuates. But God is always the same. And his promises concerning our giving never change. Listen, it's not a gamble to give to God. It's a blessing. He promises to supply all of our need, not according to our need, but according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Isn't that a blessing? That's a promise. He promised to supply all of our need according to his riches and glory. That's what it says in Philippians 4.19. I want to say this as a close. But if he never associated a further blessing for our giving, it would be worth it. Because it is a, a way, a means, a manner for you and I to say thank you back to him. Even if he never said, I'll honor them that honor me, and I'll, you know, and I'll bless you if you're obedient to me. Even if he never said that, it would still be our honor to give back to God for all that he's done for us. Christian, that's the least that we can do. Amen. That is the least that we can do for having our eternity bought and paid for with his precious blood. You want to talk about a price. I'm going to heaven forever because of the price that Jesus Christ paid on the cross for me. The very least I can do is to give back a 10% and an offering, as he puts it on my heart. That is the least I can do for him. Even if he never gave us a further blessing, it wouldn't it be worth it just to say, Lord, I love you, thank you. I just want to show you today that I've come with a heart of worship to give back as you've blessed me. That's a wonderful thing. Question today, am I biblically managing the money entrusted to me by God. If you'd stand with me, please, and our musicians would come. <clears throat> this is what we call a time of invitation. And it's because we're inviting all of us, as God has spoken to our heart, to be obedient to Him at this time. And we invite those who, number one, maybe you're here today, and you're not saved. You're not even sure where you're going to go when you die. The Bible says that we can be sure.
that heaven is our home. Because Jesus Christ came to this earth, he lived a perfect life, and he died on the cross. And the Bible says when he died on the cross, he became our sin. He took God's wrath, God's judgment on sin for you and for me. And when he did that, he died and they buried him. But three days later, after he was in the, in the tomb, three days later, Jesus rose from the dead to conquer death, hell, and the grave. And if we will believe in Jesus Christ and believe in his death, burial, and resurrection, the Bible says we shall be saved. Heaven will be our home. So if you're here today and you're not saved, as God speaks to your heart this morning, in just a few minutes I'll be standing right there. You could just come down the aisle and say, Pastor, I need to be saved. For those of us here who are saved, a couple questions. Do we give? Remember, God watched. He, he watched. He knows what and how. How are we giving? What is our heart's attitude as we put that in the plate? And are we thankful for his further blessing? You know, this morning as God speaks to our heart and as he's spoken through his word, as Brother Tim sings this morning, let's just be obedient and do business with God.